This segment is brought to you by the 2013 Ford Fusion. And so the first step is to go ahead and download the RFCAT libraries. And I'll go ahead and wget that file and tar. I'll extract that guy. All right, and cd over to rfcat and less the readme. And if you go through this readme, what you're going to find is that it has all of the information you need to know about going ahead and flashing your dongle with the firmware. Uh, thankfully, uh, this dongle is already set up, and so we don't really need to go through too much more. It actually shows the wiring diagram of some of them, like the CC1111 EMK or the Kronos dongles, oh, and nice. how to get those going. Um, this yeah. readme pretty uh, instructive. Yeah, it's pretty instructive. And so um, once we have that going, we really just need to set up two really simple dependencies, and then we should be good to actually start using that library and then start using some Python programs written with it to do fun stuff. So first thing we'll do is sudo apt get install lib usb-1.0.0. Yes, and we want to do that. And next, we need to sudo apt-get install python pack usb. And so we're going to notice here that it actually does not find that dependency. And that's kind of a bummer. But then again, we are in a very fresh install of Ubuntu 12.04. Mm -hmm. So real quick, what we'll do is uh, apt pack cache search. And then we'll say python. And if we go through and this, we'll see. It. Yeah, and th this will show us what is available in our repository. And we'll see, I'm looking for Python TAC USB. And let's see, no, I have all of these other things, Python TAC U stuff, but not USB. Oh. Uh, I could also grep for that. And so the reason why is because this is in a software source that is not enabled by default. So this kind of lends us to like start talking about software sources. But basically, if we sudo nano, this file in slash etsy slash apt, called sources.list, uh, we can see here our actual sources. And we can go ahead and enable some other ones. I can actually do this the most easily by opening up the Software Center. and going to Edit Wait, and you're doing Software Sources. I know, because I, oh like, I don't feel like typing the commands. But I check those two boxes and hit Close. Yes, you're right. I can do it in the other way. I use the GUI. Big deal. <laughs> so with that done, you sudo apt get update. And now when I sudo or when I apt cache search for Python, you'll see that I have many more things in here. So let's go ahead and grep for the word USB. And now we see Python USB mm -hmm. is listed in there. So we can sudo apt get install Python TAC USB. And there we go. Now if I ls, we'll see that we have this program here called rfcat. So I will do sudo dot slash rfcat, and the tac r operator will give me an interactive shell. Mm -hmm. And you can see that this right here is, um, is our interactive environment using Python to go ahead and start playing with this. So it can ah. do things like, gives me a couple of examples of uh, like d dot ping, or we can uh, d for dongle. And then we also have, we can set frequency, and it'll allow us to choose like, you know, here's uh, 433 megahertz. We can set our modulation type, and it supports ASK and OOK. Um, and so it's really customizable. You're well, able to do all sorts of stuff. What's nice with it. is they've done all of the heavy lifting as far as you know, making sure you can transmit, and making sure you can receive, and setting yeah. your frequency and stuff. So using this library, you can now do some really cool stuff. And they provided a real simple way to do some basic stuff, like for example, if I do D dot ping you can see that it actually sends the alphabet. Oh. And uh, you know I can receive those. I could also, if I want to transmit d.rf, here, let me get some carriage returns in there, d.rf um, xmit for transmit. And then just, just like I would do like printf, I'm like, hello world. <laughs> wow. And then it transmits that. It doesn't have any return, but if there was something else listening on that same frequency, mm -hmm. I would see hello world in okay. whatever modulation we both agreed on. Uh, so, go ahead and exit using the exit operator. And that kind of gives you an idea of how powerful that library is. Now, here's the cool thing. 
at TorCon 14, Mike Osmond did a, um, a challenge to see what kind of cool stuff people can do with the badge. And Root the Box team, these are the guys that put on an awesome uh, hacking competition. Oh, yeah, yeah. They put together a chat client using that library, using the dongle, nice. and making their own Python you know, um, front end to that, and uh, coming up with their own protocol for this chat. So you'll be transferring all your chat messages over the radio instead yes. of wireless or anything? Well, that is one and the same. But yes, instead of doing well, yeah. it over 2.4 gigahertz over Wi-Fi that we're used to, I'll right. be putting it over like 433 or 900. <laughs> I, I knew what you meant. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about how to get that started. Uh, first of all, I'm going to need apt. I'm going to need a git. So I'm going to sudo apt-get install git because it doesn't come on Ubuntu by default. Uh, git being a repo happiness program. Okay, now I can actually git clone the repository. And they have it over at https colon slash slash there in github.com slash not git hit. What? And this is going to go ahead and clone the Tor chat repo. And I can go into Tor chat now and see that they have a fun, happy little Python program. And if we actually nano torchat.py, you'll see that they actually, uh, you know, it, it's pretty well documented. So you can kind of look at this as an example of what cool stuff you can do with this. They pull, they spin up an end curses screen. Uh, you can see here's their, uh, their interface for some of that. You can see down here, they actually have a description of their, I guess it's in another one. Let me, uh, nano lib tor chat.py. Here we go. This is actually an example of their message wrapper. So you can see that, you know, they, they started, they've got a, uh, an ID number, a type, an index, um, the last chat, the user that's sending it. And then they've got a section here for the day, uh, for the payload and the end. Um, of course, whenever you've got comments, you're going to see things like, this is confusing <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> so that's always fun. Um, but with all of that now, we can actually go ahead and run their Tor Chat program um, by doing sudo dot slash torchat.py. And you can see here I have my interface. And so if I you to change my name, I'll say I'm Darren. And I'll put a message out there and say, is anyone out there? And Shannon, who has my laptop set up with another RF cat dongle, can go ahead and respond. There we go. And I'm like, hi, snobs. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and as you can see, now cool. we have uh, a chat. And it's totally not going over the standard uh, message. That's standard, awesome. Um, like 2.4 right. or 5.8 that we're used to. So first off, the convention, the people that are at, at the hacker cons, they're not going to be thinking to actually hack this kind of RF. Well, signal. okay, so that's the thing is you're talking about security through obscurity now, and and you're right. Like so, this is a protocol written kind of on the fly. The uh, the root the box team put this together in two days, and they. Um, there's no encryption being used here. Okay. So anybody with another Torcon badge could potentially just sniff on the same frequency and watch our entire chat. Mm -hmm. uh, security could be adding it on the application layer if with this were PGP re or with PGP like or something, and mm -hmm. if this were rewritten in that kind of a way with store and forward capabilities, that's totally a possibility. And it's the reason why I'm starting to learn Python because I want to do just that. Um, I don't know a lick of Python. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> I can so read will it, these but... work like at, at a very far distance or just like next to each, no. each other? No. So the Torcon badges um, don't have the greatest range. We were testing before um, with you in the other office, and mm -hmm. it was working just fine. I don't know the exact range. Uh, I know that the lower the frequency is, typically the further we can get on with okay. similar EIRP and with similar uh, wattage. And that's good to know. And so yes, this could potentially be a lot better than Wi-Fi at 2.4 gigahertz. This mm -hmm. is lower in the spectrum at like 433 or 950 or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the Torcon badge itself. While it does have an antenna, it's actually kind of built in. It's uh, right where those uh, where the sponsor logos are. But um, there's traces underneath this that create it. Uh, with this particular one, there's actually solder points here to put yourself uh, oh, to so put, you could an put another antenna. antenna on you it. could put a bigger antenna on cool. it, and you could probably put a better tuned antenna depending on what frequency you're using. Right. So if you were just using 400 megahertz, you would have like a you could change the length of the antenna based on what you're using. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so, but 
From my understanding, there's considering this is open hardware, and I also I know and I, I, anyway, it's my understanding that hardware uh, that there will be more hardware dongles for this sort of stuff. So cool. kind of it, throwing this out there now to get people to start thinking about that kind of stuff because yeah. when that becomes available, it'll be really fun. So that like at hacker conferences or wherever we can like start, you know, using other kinds of radio, mm -hmm. not just Wi-Fi. And that's really exciting because you really learn a whole lot when you're basically building a whole stack. Yeah. Now this makes it easy to get started in software-defined radio because you don't have to think about like how to create a uh, amplitude shift keying or a frequency shift keying signal. That's the nice thing about this Texas Instruments chip is it does all of that stuff for you. Personally, if I had to, I'd use on-off keying because I'm lazy uh, and it's really easy. But we're going to get into what all of those concepts mean because it's really fun when you start looking at Wi-Fi in like lower down in the OSI stack and you start like getting into the actual link layer stuff and how the modulation <laughs> works and you know how I geek out about that. But I'm sending you a bunch of random messages. Oh yeah, I'm on your computer. <laughs> you know, here's another cool thing is W, load web page. It's a, a neat feature that they added where if you uh, enter in a URL and your computer, say your computer isn't online uh -huh. and you enter in a URL, my computer is online. I'll go ahead and fetch that URL for you, oh, and dude. it'll fire, open a Firefox for you. I mean, totally cool. not secure yeah. uh, in the way that it's implemented, but just kind of like as an idea of like, hey, we can bridge the internet through those frequencies. That's and, so cool. Yeah, and I'm sure there's. Well, actually, now that I say all of this stuff, I realize that um, that. Uh, oh no, never mind. It's ISM. You can do encryption over ISM. See, now sure. I completely understand why you were so excited when you got home from TorCon, mm -hmm. because th this is awesome, and I can't wait to see like what the developers start working on. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. is like Remember at DEF CON last year, the badge was that um, like it had this IR transmitter yeah. on it, and yep. if I was standing in front of you, our badges are communicating. But, and, yeah, they'll start lighting up and communicating with each other. And that's pretty cool, but imagine if like I can plug my Linux computer into it, and give it like a message mm -hmm. that I want to like send out to this person and I have their PGP key and so maybe I want to send a message to dual core and I don't know when I'm going to run into them right. but I've got a circle of trust right and I can say this is an encoded message to dual core mm -hmm. here's his uh, key fingerprint so that that's like who it's being sent to and I run into you and you're at the booth or whatever yeah. and my uh, dongle talks to your dongle and it says hey I'm trying to send a message to XYZ that's cool. Is this the person you've seen before? And yeah. you're like, your dongle's all like, yeah, dual core, I've totally seen him. He comes by the booth sometimes. And I'm like, cool, well, when you see him again, give him this message. Yeah. Totally cool concept. Um, That's awesome. It's something that I'm toying with. I really need to learn Python to get this going. <laughs> but I want to encourage you guys to, to get involved. If you have ideas of how to put something like this together, it's just, it's so much fun when you start thinking about uh, computing and uh, communications outside of what has just been provided to us by those industries and start thinking about like, oh, how would we build our own, you know, free and open stuff. <laughs> mm, fun. Yeah, not to get on a tirade about uh, the evils of the internet and why it's not actually free <laughs> and open, but we'll save that for another time. Anyway, yeah. um, with all of that said, feedback at hack5.org is the uh, easiest way to get in touch with us and uh, expect to see more um, SDR goodness in the future. I think we're going to go into uh, P PGP and VPNs before we get to that because we're going to be building on those technologies when we do get to SDR. But right. that's kind of a roadmap of what's ahead. Very cool. Yes. Well, I'm looking forward to that, and I have something pretty cool to uh, show you guys. Oh, yeah, that's right. What are you getting into this week? Yeah, so have you heard of Tails? Absolutely. I'm super excited Security. about... Security! Oh, wait, no, this isn't Sonic's friend? And no. he was going to go and get all the rings? <laughs> No, not that one. Oh, bummer. <laughs> Sega! <laughs> now I want to go play Sonic. Thanks a lot. Yeah, sorry about that. No, um, this is another Tales. It's still really cute. This is the Onion Router stuff? Yes. Oh, yeah. I love oh, yeah. me some of that. Yeah. It's awesome. That's like awesome layer of obscurity and security mm -hmm. and convoluted awesome stuff math. Yep, so uh, it, I'll be checking that out next. A, on top of a... Uh, a, what is it called? A hostile network. That yes. is the internet. Yes. Yeah. So exactly. I don't know. I'm seeing some concepts colliding here. Uh oh. Uh -oh. oh yeah, this could that be good. That could be cool. All right, stay tuned. We'll be back here in just a bit. And Paul's going to figure out what camera we're going to be on. <laughs> We love technology here on Hack5, especially when it gets integrated into our cars. And these Ford cars that we've gotten to drive around this year have been loaded with technology. Today, we're checking out the 2013 Ford Fusion. 
Now this car is packed with tons of cool features, and my favorite is the Sync with My Ford Touch system. Sync has you covered, whether it's getting directions or changing the music. Using touch controls and voice commands, Sync with My Ford Touch provides an easy to use way to access your vehicle systems with your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. There are two configurable instrument panel LCDs controlled by two switch pads on the steering wheel, and there's an eight inch touch screen in the center stack. This is just one of the great features that you'll find in the 2013 Ford Fusion. Tune in to future episodes of Pack 5 to see more. Thanks again to Ford for sponsoring today's show and for their commitment to technology.